let's just have a conversation. So you have you have you have those Christians, those of us who read scripture and study scripture and actually know what scripture says. And this isn't to belittle anyone or look down on anyone. It's just to make clear that, you know, you have some people who associate themselves with Christianity, but they don't they don't study scripture. So when they see things um, other Christians are doing that align with scripture, they get defensive. They push back because uh, it seems that what the other what the Christians who are following scripture scripture is doing it seems mean so um you have those christians who who play it safe right don't speak on certain things um don't touch on certain things because it's sensitive right it it will offend people well if you truly follow the bible then you know that offense is going to happen when you speak the truth not that you necessarily uh uh intentionally aim to offend somebody but when you speak the truth is gonna happen anyway I don't care how how uh, nice you try and go about doing it I don't care about how kind-hearted you try and be when you when you speak the truth it's gonna offend somebody because it disagrees with their their worldview or the way that they view life <clears throat> so, I guess what I'm trying to say, I'm making this video to certain Christians who rather play the sideline and say, don't talk about that. They th and they feel that you you disturb harmony that way, that you cause contention. You know, if you just don't say certain things, then, you know, you won't upset certain people or, um, you know, the world would be a better place. Um, if, if I, I don't want them thinking Christians are like this. And I get it, you know, there are there are Christians that are extreme and insensitive, right? Even though they come with truth, they don't come with much love. Or well, sometimes they don't come with love at all. They they preach from a place of pride. So anytime we, we, we share the word of God, it's supposed to be done from a place of love, not from a place of pride. Now the word of God is gone correct. So, you know, you have <clears throat> certain lifestyles that the Lord looks upon and he is he's he's displeased with let's just be be real sex outside of marriage fornication as the Bible calls it. God is not pleased with it everybody promotes it right hook up and hook up with this person hook up with that person we see it on all these dating shows we see it everywhere in the media media um you can't ride down the, down the road without seeing some type of billboard and, and, and sex is some type of sex symbol sex sales right so so they're promoting it the world is promoting it god does not like it right drunkenness <clears throat> everybody talks about how tore up they're gonna get on the weekend um they talk about how messed up they're gonna get how when they get with they they, they folks they're gonna turn up birthday parties turn up christmas parties turn up you know get drunk drunken Bible tells us it's clear on how how the Lord feels about drunkenness. It's displeasing to him. Homosexuality, very sensitive, very difficult to talk about. It's a very sensitive area, but the Lord is very clear on how He feels about it. Right. So you have Christians who well, let's not let's not speak on that. You don't want to step on anyone's toes. It's like man. Do you love people or do you want to comfort them on their way to hell? You got to ask yourself that question. See, that's that's pseudo love, right? Let me just shut up. Let me not offend them. It's pseudo love. That's not real love. Real love is a warning. Look, the day of the Lord is coming, right? The Bible tells us he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Like he's serious about purity. He's serious about holiness. No holiness is of our own self, right? It's only in him that we're holy. But we have to let him sanctify us, right? We have to do what the Bible says, take up our cross and follow him, right? Deny ourselves, die daily. We have to do that. It's the only way we're pleasing to the Lord. That is called the sanctification process. That is called repentance. That's turning from my sin and turning to the Lord. 
it's, 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 that's, that's what it is. It's not changing. It's the only way we can be saved. The only way we are saved is by absolute and complete belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your words cannot save you. Like, you cannot say, you cannot do enough good to enter into heaven. God is not going to share his glory with anybody. So you can't say, I can't say, you can't say, when we run, when we run into each other, the Lord is willing in heaven. I can't say like, oh yeah, I got here, you know, because uh, when I was 21, oh man, I just started every year up until I died. I just started caring for old people or I just started, you know, doing turkey drives each year. Like, it's not my good deeds. You know, no man can boast. That's what Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tells us. You know, we're saved by, by faith through grace alone. We're saved by grace through faith alone, right? Um, not by works so that any man can boast. So we God will not share that glory with us. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. You know, um, man, you don't want anybody's blood on your hands. The people that God has allowed you to cross paths with, Right, if you patting them on the back in the way of their lifestyle that you know or you should know according to scripture, that's leading them to hell, man. That blood when you stand before God, you're gonna be accountable for that. I don't know what, what, what that looks like or what type of you know, in, in what type of way he's gonna deal with you. I just know you'll you'll be accountable. I don't want anybody blood on my hands. You know, so tell the truth. Do so in love, not pride, not just oh I'm gonna tell you, don't bully people. You know, you don't wanna <laughs> Even the Lord, when he, when every time the Lord corrected, when we see Jesus, any time he was correcting somebody, it was done in love. It wasn't done in a place of, from a place of pride. Oh, that disturbs my heart, so I'm gonna tell them about myself. Get yourself right. You know, he told us, get the log out of out of your own, get the the log out of your own eye, so you could deal with the splinter in your brother's eye. But that doesn't mean we shy away from truth and shy away from telling people the truth in love. So yeah, man. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say. Us, in these last days, get a backbone. Get a backbone. Do not compromise. Stand on truth. Because um, the Lord requires it. You know, his, his day of judgment is coming. And he loves you. He loves me. And he also loves those who are lost. So we need to be going to be fishermen of men like he tells us to be. Right? Going to get these souls. Tell them the truth. Share the love of Christ. Right? Not condemning anybody. But share the love of Jesus with, with, with them. His word says this, <laughs> and he's not changing. It says, the Bible says, heaven and the earth will pass away. Like, he's not playing about his word because God is not a liar. So, um, with that being said, man, like, if, if you love those people who God has allowed you to cross paths with, tell the truth. And if you're uncomfortable, ask him, Lord, um, do something in my heart. Lord, give me your, your your spirit, your Holy Spirit, to give me the, the confidence, to give me the wisdom to communicate in love uh, with the truth, Lord, of who you are and, and what it is that you require. So, yeah, um, but really, really, really be serious about this. I love you, and that's the only reason I'm coming to you with this message.